I'm Molly Stanberry for MacMost. Today I want to show how to do a basic audio recording on your Mac using GarageBand 08. First off, we need to get audio into the computer. There are several ways to get audio into your Mac. You can use the analog inputs if your Mac is so equipped, or you can use either the optical digital input or the Firewire or USB inputs via a digital audio interface. Let's look at the analog inputs first. Most newer Macs have an 8th inch stereo analog line in and line out jacks, older iBooks being the exception. Often using these inputs is the simplest and most expedient way to get audio into your Mac. You can hook up most audio devices using a male stereo mini to dual male RCA adapter cable. This is great if you want to use a turntable or mixer as an audio source. When you use the analog inputs on your Mac, you are using the Mac's own internal analog to digital converters. While these are actually pretty good nowadays, using an external audio interface is usually preferable. Audio interfaces range from the $40 iMic interface to various USB mics and headsets with built-in converters, to high-end interfaces such as the $500 Apogee Duet interface, or multi-channel interfaces like the $700 Personas Fire Studio. Depending on the interface, these can have USB, Firewire, or even optical connections to hook up to your Mac. The advantages that these interfaces offer are things like higher quality sampling rates and bit depths than the Mac's built-in audio, and they can also offer such features as direct monitoring and digital effects. For this tutorial, we'll just look at a USB headset. Once you have an audio source hooked up to your Mac, the first stop in the recording process is the sound control panel. To go to the sound control panel, go to System Preferences under the Apple menu and click on Sound. Click on the Input tab and you will see a list of connected audio devices on your Mac. Our list has the internal microphone, line-in audio, the built-in audio, and C-Media USB headphone set. We'll select the C-Media USB headset. Next, we want to set our initial audio levels to avoid distorting our audio recording later on. Speak or sing into your microphone at a loud level, or start playback of your audio device. Adjust the input levels using the input volume slider so that the input levels are at about 80% of the sound input indicator bar. While we are in the sound control panel, we want to set an output device. Click on the output tab. And we'll choose internal speakers as an output device. Click on the red close button to close the sound control panel and save your settings. Next, we'll need to open an audio recording application. GarageBand comes with all new Macs as part of the iLife suite, and even if it didn't come with your Mac, you should purchase the iLife suite just for GarageBand, even if you're going to do occasional audio recording on your Mac. We'll note that there are many free and inexpensive audio recording applications available for your Mac, including the open source application Audacity, available at audacity.sourceforge.net. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just address using GarageBand 08. To do an audio recording using GarageBand, launch GarageBand. We'll choose Create New Music Project and we'll name our project Recording Test and click on the Create button. In the GarageBand window, we'll close the keyboard window if it appears, since we don't need that at the moment. Go to the GarageBand menu and select Preferences to open GarageBand's Preferences. Click on the Audio MIDI tab. We'll make sure that built-in output is selected under the Audio Output selector and that C-Media USB headphone set is selected under the audio input. While still in the Preferences window, we want to check our recording quality settings. Click on the Advanced tab. Notice the Audio Resolution selector. The selector has three options, Good, Better, and Best. We'll choose Better to record in 24-bit resolution, but export at 16-bit resolution for standard CD resolution files. Click on the red Close button to exit the Preferences panel and save our settings. Next, we'll select New Basic Track from the Track menu. With our new track highlighted, we'll click on the I or Track Info button in the lower right-hand corner of the GarageBand window. In the bottom of the Track Info pane, you'll notice an Input Source selector. Ours is showing Stereo 1-2, C-Media USB headphone set. And since there is no need to make a stereo recording of a mono voice, we are going to select Mono 1, C-Media USB headphone set. We'll also leave the monitor selector to off to avoid any chance of feedback. Next, we want to check our recording levels again. 
Make sure that the automatic level control checkbox is not checked. Speak or sing into your microphone at a loud level or start playback of your audio device. Adjust the input levels using the recording level slider so that the input levels are at about 80% of the track's level volume meter. Once your level is set, you can click the I button to close the track info window. When you're ready to record, click on the record button in the transport controls. To stop recording, click the play button to stop the recording and playback, or click the record button to stop recording but continue playback. This is convenient if you only need to record vocals in certain parts of a song, for example. But in most cases, you'll want to click the play button to stop recording. You can now click the go to beginning button to go to the beginning of the track and click the play button to hear the playback of your recording. We'll address editing your audio in a future tutorial, but for now we want to show you some of the saving and exporting options in GarageBand. First off, save your project often to make sure you don't lose any of your recordings or the changes you've made to your project. To save your project, click on Save under the File menu or use the Command and S key shortcut. To export your recording, you have several options under GarageBand's Share menu. We can send a song to iTunes, Send your song as a ringtone, send podcast to iWeb, export song to disk, and burn song to CD. Lots of options. The simplest is to save your recording or song to disk. With the compressed checkbox unchecked, simply click export to save your recording as a standard 16-bit AIF file to disk. If you check the compressed checkbox, it will bring up the audio compression options, including the ability to export as an AAC file or as an MP3 file. In addition to the export to disk option, you may find the send song to iTunes option useful. By using the send to iTunes option, you have the same options to save your file either compressed or not, but you also have the option to add metadata to the file and the file will automatically be added to your iTunes music library. After you've exported your audio file and saved your project, you can close GarageBand. This is Molly Stanberry for MacMost. Be sure to check the macmost.com website for more helpful tutorials. Thank <laughs> you.